Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. What makes that difference? That a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life, he is a generational blessing. His name becomes an access key to favor. That every time you say, I am associated with Sam, they say, which Sam? Because of that access is given. What is responsible for this difference in society? It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization it's not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word, influence. 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 The mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the Lordship of Christ. Everybody say influence. Influence will do more than tracts will do. Influence will do more than crusades will do. Influence. At every given point in your life, your decisions, your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model. Consciously or unconsciously. And therefore the key to bringing earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it, it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind. And he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. 
his emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men and that's what we call being born again the establishment of the reign and the rule of the christ in the hearts of men not just coming for altar call Cult, altar call is not enough to get you born again it gets you saved but to be born anew and to be transformed the christ needs to be established in your heart the degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first... The Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitation is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty man in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are 
is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bunker. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, when you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries, you will find a reason to say, Lord, I thank you. The training process is always difficult because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting false is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens. Number one, a father and a son platform. A transfer from a father to a son. Number two, a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice. Number three, a transfer from a teacher to a student. You cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague. No, sir. It's against the law of impartation. That means every time you want to receive, one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser. Even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching. And immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree? Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down, not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
as I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into and concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up. Otherwise, you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you. That's what has happened. We have a generation of irresponsible people. Spiritually irresponsible. Mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another nigerians blame government africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can i do to live where i am gideon was a little boy who was hiding. He heard of the miracles that happened. And now, he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says, Oh thou mighty man of value, can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation? Let me tell you something. My message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement. If you have that kind of mindset here, your first assignment tonight is repent. Can we have the windows open? I think the rain is... Hallelujah. Everyone say in the name of Jesus, I take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say it one more time in the name of jesus i refuse resentment i refuse blaming people i make up my mind that from today i take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life that's right that's the, the decision that begins to change your life you say this among your colleagues and they will insult you some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God that foolish man was a herbalist but what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. 
my challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility please pray one minute say lord i make up my mind pray pray open your mouth don't just pray in your heart willingly and consciously before heaven this day this day this day the 22nd of may i make up my mind that from today i begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life if any change will happen it depends on you and god if your generation must hear your voice it depends on you and god pray Zika Pratoko Soto Lama Karyada Baladaba Shekete Pratege de Bosch Pray Lekata Paka Proto Soto Barike de Bele de Bokoriadaba Pray I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Manda kala prati gele boko so prandi geri ata bahashara balada bara 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 bara. I'm a lady, that's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter, I believe, 4, 4 verse 23. Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. 
Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family. You can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change. Or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell. Is that serious? Keep your heart. It is your responsibility. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it, out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor Jakes. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water. It's a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and think, they think we are idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law the law of manifestation and that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset the inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality are you getting what i'm saying that means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies by and large your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Or let me use a, a term that is now 
compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell them may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate meanwhile let's go to our man in the office there the man is in the office and when he sits down the next thing is he opens the fridge sees apples dates all kinds of things and he says my soul find rest he forgets no 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 see how cheap his mindset is he forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating and quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it and he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is, just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen and they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you 
resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. Shabbat Shabbat what is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough, that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage. That there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard. A status quo. Are you getting my point? It's a terrible mindset. A terrible mental state of being. Because it produces dangerous fruits. And we're about to see a few of them. Let me tell you. The foolishness of many people in society. From preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders is motivated by this poisonous mindset subtle but dangerous low self-esteem what does low self-esteem do low self-esteem when it is matured in a man becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance. So all that fight for titles. All that fight for recognition. All that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life. Is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem. Are we blessed? So a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair. She can be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology. And then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000. And that becomes a goal. She's under pressure. Borrowing money. Trying to prove all kinds of things. And then when she buys it and puts it. She's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo. It's God speaking to us. So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of god thinks i can teach but i can't prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow are you getting my point even to the point of witchcraft and when he gets it he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me i will be like so 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 man of god are you seeing that now a poisonous mindset this is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters fathers and mothers a father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a ceo and i am an assistant director and his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down are we blessed now low self-esteem a mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience especially in young people they want to buy the car now they want to marry now right they want sharp sharp money now sharp sharp success you want to start a ministry and in four months have a record breaking five thousand crowd low self-esteem to prove and you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. It's God helping us. Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe 
that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that, oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> Is God speaking to us? There are many preachers. They start preaching now. And they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now. And they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy. Or go and die in Brazil right low self-esteem being a motivation for many things that's why you see preachers come please look at men of god for instance when another man of god is about to see one everybody is standing to see who will greet who as a proof right meaning that the one who greets one is accepted you see we carry our villages we carry our pain we carry our backgrounds mix it with the anointing mix it with ministry and off we go misleading many people yes. so he comes to me and then i cannot greet him there are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say god bless you how are you no because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you. Give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband ten times. And you drove him ten times. Because something in your mind. You live around the mediocres just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, guy, guy you represented us. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around, lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that? All of those things. Some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody. The clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in. That mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half cast. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here.
Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus, I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a jeep. Say, Mary, what a jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3. An uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. He said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth there are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Cotonou, and it's a lie. Pressure to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around. Telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you. Or don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak 
and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh God over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um, I'm, 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 we are going to get married let me just calm down I'm trusting God for some finances to come before you know it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say I'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage hey, God is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of five million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, sir, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? that this person did this she was so disappointed she still been disappointed she still did this and i said shame on you one because you went was it not in a room was it outside it happened you went to the room you were also tempted you will not accept that part of your role the role you played in seducing him you are you saying you did not see the advancement coming you were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it is that not how it happens he was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communications. Unguarded communications. Matters that don't concern you. It's amazing. You hear people talking about their father, talking about their mother, talking about their sister. A lady met me and said, ah, that uh, 
her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind look i'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble are you hearing what i'm saying many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people including your destiny helpers every time they mention your name to live to people say may god forbid i rather die than to give this person a job this person is a destroyer of destiny have you seen people like that you come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say my brother i'm a christian oh uh, i won't hide this thing from you there's something i want to tell you about this lady i saw the way you are blind flower and blind buying flower and all of these things all these things you are doing what is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13. you are just coming innocently you don't know you you think she's a nice lady and the guy said eh. well i'm not saying she has hiv but who knows if there's something go for test mount some of us listen mindsets listen to me it's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth you just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes are we growing tonight some of these issues look little but this is what makes leaders out of people notice that leaders are calm people they are people who evaluate things they are people who look into things because one day somebody is going to say something about your life your ministry your business something is that true i remember when one woman i think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you, and immediately he finishes the gossip in about tossing. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry you. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. 
you may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why, what is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, Everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him. Everybody will come and say, we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion. There are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous. Don't think everybody is struggling. There are people seated quietly here. I know them. There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was giving caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life and the most sincere woman that my neighbor's friend i've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges she shared her testimony here and that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry she will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her I, there was a time she came there was nobody you know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless. Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth. My mouth will not be the reason why I would destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative. And gradually, you see that your respect has been going down. 
Have you seen people like that? One moment they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman says, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas when you came, she said, kind man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life, but you threw away your honor. Everybody write this word down, honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor. The ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man thinketh, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it, but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind when I find out that there is something flawed in my life? How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life. Transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept. There are some of us here, God has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings. But something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives. Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us, but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate aright. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our Oga was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing. Well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come. And the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia. I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of no, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, This person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. 
So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say lord jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar. Oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. 
I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life and I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodu, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because I know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that I give them a hug I talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here I honor them that's why immediately after service they come around you the little children sit near you as they are sharing the grace they are running away from you something about your life is driving them that's how a business partner will look at you and say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you I want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you and you step into favor favor that you will never recover from there are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened but because I honored my way to them I treated people with courtesy and I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. 
you will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now? You cannot respond to us. Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> He went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws and do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me, me, God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice and endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. endurance endurance endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ you went to win souls nothing happened you went for that meeting you thought the power of God would move nothing happened and you seem to live in shame don't worry keep fasting keep praying I know you went and it looked like they dread you you went to sing and you lost your key you lost your voice you embarrassed don't worry let them keep laughing don't be under pressure to prove anything and say no is i can sing oh what happened that day is i had kata forget about all those explanations kata or no kata continue a day will come you will be noted for persistence and your critics will become the advocates of your lifting when you endure if you give up you make the prophecy of your critics true. 
you make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution, but endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary and now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives. Seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure. I know you have been taught that if it is of God, it must come cheap and easy. No, sir. There is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown. This is a very deep teaching. You must endure. We are going to pray. Oh, I will endure. No matter what it will take, I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tightening. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Endure. Some of you, you go and receive. As old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. Endure endure you don't have suit to wear don't be under pressure to do anything endure is god speaking to us i choose to endure this is how this ministry came to see what god is doing today and to see where he brought us and to see where he's taking us endurance endure the mockery endure the shame never be under pressure to prove yourself at every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet. As a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.